crap, these guys just don't give up. Oof. Dang, I actually got hit by that. Okay, Belief. Or, yeah, I think it's your name, Belief. Elbert Climax, let's go. Now you see, look at this guy's health bar. I mean, he's not dropping like a rock, but still, oh, crap, slime. Yeah, this guy will capture you in slime, so, yeah, whenever you do that, you might want to shake out of it, like, quickly. And that's really one of the faults that the gamepad has. Like, the, the analog sticks aren't necessarily bad, but compared to playing with, like, a regular controller, shaking out of stuff is pathetically easy. And thank you, John. So, yeah, John is also now, what's it called, a friend rather than kind of a rival. I mean, the first game, like, almost every chapter you were in, you you fought John eventually. In this game, um, if you guys haven't seen the trailers, John kind of plays a bigger role in this game. I, I won't spoil what role she plays because you're going to find out like very shortly. But yeah, so far she's kind of helping us. And ha, you missed me, slime monster thing. <laughs> um, Brick Climax, let's go. Let's go. Right, let's take out this angel once and for all. All right, Umbrin Climax. That was actually really quick. And, oh yeah, one more thing. So, a new mode that this game features is Tag Climax. It's basically a multiplayer competition mode where you and a friend compete for Halos. And no matter what, whether you win or you lose, you do get a large sum of Halos. So, me and my cousin Josh, I'm pretty sure you remember for such LPs as the Saints Row 3 LP, Pirate Warriors 2 LP, um, Saints Row 4. Me and him were playing that because he also got the game. And let's just say that because of that, I now own all the techniques Bayonetta could get. So yeah, just spoiler for that. Booyah! And this guy isn't dead. This guy just took two massive fists to the face and this guy is not dead yet. So we're at Umbrin Climax. Now this guy should be finished. And... Come on. Nice. Let's go. Climax! Booyah! That was a beautiful kick. And let's see. Bayonetta, who are you going to use now? Patches! Patches is back! Holy crap! It's Patches! Haha, <laughs> yes! Ah, Patches, I knew you were gone forever. You were just waiting for the seagull. And 240, 2400 gigatons. Nice. Thank you, Patches. Alright, he's out of the way for life, and he screamed like Godzilla. And Platinum! Booyah! What the hell just happened? So, Pat just turned on us. Cere not Cereza. Um, John is now in the underworld. So, um, well, this game might to explain what just happened. But yeah, if you were paying attention to the dialogue in the cutscene when chapter um, the prologue started, John and Bayna were saying that um, the fellas down south also were kind of feeling a little different. That foreshadows that apparently the demons kind of, um, yeah, they kind of want Bayonetta and John dead. Which is kind of, uh, how would you say, uh, douchebaggy? And yeah, back to what I was saying before about how this opening level draws you in. We're fighting a gigantic dog on a building with wings. This is almost like a classic kaiju movie. So yeah, this is, um, this is very cool. Booyah! Ouch. But yeah, seriously... If this doesn't draw gamers into their game, I really don't even know what will. 
I mean, this oh, this prologue has so many elements that just say, "Holy crap, we this is possible." I, I don't even know. It's just so over the top. That's why I love the first Bayonetta game because everything was so over the top. And so far with this, so far what I've played with this game and what I've seen, this game follows the same tradition: over the topness to the extreme. All right, come on, and okay, he's almost halfway dead. Yeah, come on. Oh, you missed. Suck it. Oh. I'm ready, Climax. Hopefully, just maybe we can actually take this guy out. Die already, Patches! Uh, I'm sorry, Patches. I, I didn't mean that. I did not mean that. Just don't attack me a lot, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Crap. Dang, this is so boss. And the music makes this fight even more awesome. All right, come on. And Patches is... Okay, we got to do a torture attack. Climax. Nice. And who's it gonna be now? And hopefully this demon doesn't turn on us. Crap! Dang it! The, you see the negative effects of playing with a gamepad. Holy crap, Tyrantula dog! Holy crap! I'm sorry, Patches. I'm so sorry. But we got Tyrantula dog beasting. So yeah, nice. <laughs> Witches get dragged to hell. It is what it is. Jean's gonna wander Inferno suffering for eternity. Them's the breaks. I didn't ask you to tell me what I already know, Rodon. Especially if you're going to be flip about it. You know better than that. You're not the kind to let that sort of summon go out of control, Bayonetta. Something's up. The balance of powers that keep things in check don't feel right, does it? You know, she's pretty hot for a dead chick. <laughs> it wasn't a big fan of her shit when she was in the realm of the living. But looking at her now? <sighs> nah, still not a fan. She's not dead, Enzo. She's right, Enzo. You're only really dead after your soul's been completely absorbed into another realm of the Trinity. But that's just a matter of time. Because I don't see no way of saving a soul lost in hell. What about the gates? The real gates of hell? I can't stop you from trying to use them. But I don't think you got a chance down there. I'll see what I can do about putting her on ice for a while. You need this. The heart of an Umbra Witch. The magic that keep your kind alive in this world for eternities. Should keep her body in this realm stable. But you'll need to reunite this with her soul if you're gonna try and bring her back. I figure you got about a day before it's game over. Enzo, you've got a jet, right? What? No! No, 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 no! I do not know! Listen, I appreciate the situation, but you know what today is? My kids got cookies baked for me at home! They're waiting for me! And I still got a place Santa tonight! Let the real Santa take care of the presents. Now let's go! Hey, I said I believe 
But Ed and Edna, you can't put one over on those two little fuckers, let me tell you. <laughs> hey! Let go! Let go of me! Why do I always get wrapped up in this shit? The sacred mountain of Fimbleventer. The joint's supposed to be the link between Inferno and Paradiso. They say there is an entrance to Inferno, the gates of hell, somewhere on this mountain. No one knows where, though. Hell, no one even knows if it's true or not. The only reason this overgrown rock is worshipped like some god in the first place is that no one's ever been able to get close to the damn thing. It's like it don't want you there. Every climber ends up stranded or worse. And don't even try to fly a plane near that place. Or bada boom! But at least your soul doesn't have a long walk to whichever afterlife you got lined up, right? I'll wait for you in no until at the foot of the mountain. Just hurry up with whatever it is you gotta do and get back there, all right? And the hotel's going on your account. With a mini bar, too. Gotta keep myself busy while I'm waiting. Forget about it. Uh, I love those miniature drinks. I can't believe you, Enzo. I didn't know the in-flight service was exclusive to fat Italians. Renting the plane ain't free, you know. That reminds me, you owe Alex the kid for the charter. Oh, oh yeah! There it is. That's Fimblebinter. Not such a bad place when you look at it. Oh, but you gotta have a death wish to get close to that damn place if you ask me. Wow. Gives me the heebie-jeebies. What the hell? Where did these clouds come from? Enzo, this is where I get off. Say hi to the wife and kids. What? What? Wait, what? You're joking, right? I can't find it, please, I can't! John, I'm on my way. Just behave yourself for a bit longer. Did Enzo just reference Alex the Kid? I mean, that's a reference that not a lot of people are going to get. But still, really? Okay, so yeah. For those of you who don't know, Alex the Kid was originally Sega's first attempt at making a mascot for the Sega Master System. Um, did they succeed? Well, um, you tell me. Do you guys know who Alex the Kid is? Well, besides how I just told you, but yeah. Anyway, though, Sega's first successful attempt was actually Sonic the Hedgehog, but, you know, Alistair Kid was always there, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, though, we're over here in Niffel, Niffel, whatever his place is. I'm just calling it Niffelheim. Yeah, Niffelheim. Let's go with that. So, yeah, like I guess I'm going to be zooming through this stage because we already did. So, the first gate is, the first Medeoheim, whatever it's called, is over here. And let's just go over, yeah. Oh, see, so, yeah, like I said, also Treasure Chests are back. So, they look like these um pyramid thingamabobs. Just punch them a million times. And you get treasures. Ooh, a mega lollipop herb. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, there's wire in this game now. So, yeah, no more two, like, not even two foot, about, like, one foot wire puddles. Um, yeah, there's actually full water sections over here. And the bad thing is you can't turn into jaguar form. Oh, yeah, jaguar form is back. Look at this. Yay. Eh, I love jaguar form. Also, if you buy a power-up, you, wait, also you buy a power-up. Oh, come on. Seriously? You also get crow form. So, yeah, it's back. 
And sadly, though, like I said before, when you enter wire, you can't transform into Jaguar form. Sadly. Aww. And also, you kind of... The wire kind of slows down your combat, but then again, it isn't too bad. Also, you do the three cartwheels in a row. Jump. Let's go. Woohoo! I love that move. So, I have no idea what I just did right there, but I'll take it. Nice! We're doing some mid-air combat right here. Holy crap, this is cool. Oh, yeah, also, let me tell you my story of Bayonetta 2. And sorry for the voice cracks. I know it's my voice is kind of weird like that. So, let me tell you my story of Bayonetta 2. So, originally, yeah, when I first heard about Bayonetta 2 coming out, I was like, oh, I've never heard about this game. So, I picked up Bayonetta 1, played it, loved it to death. So, you know, naturally, I was excited for the sequel. So, on Thursday, the day before Bayonetta 2 came out, I get a call from my local GameStop saying they're relocating, so all, everything you pre-order will be set to another GameStop. That pissed me off to no end because I wanted the game and telling me that I could not pick up the game because the game started relocating it really did get me mad plus also the game stop was about like a good 15 minute walk from my house so yeah there goes the local game stop oh so I, I tell myself you know what this probably isn't true I'm gonna go to that game stop um, the day Bayonet 2 comes out to see what's the commotion about next pro is over there yeah just go in there so um I go to the game stop yesterday which was the 24 the day Bayonet 2 comes out so I asked them, hey, is it okay if I could pick up some stuff? They was like, oh, no, sorry, we were, we were relocating, so you can't pick up anything. But I was like, but Bayonetta 2 comes out that day. So they were like, oh, yeah, you could pick that up. So I, I, they get the game, and I realize, oh, crap, this game is ready to them. I can't pick it up. So I tell them that. And it's like, you know what? Ah, forget about it. You can just buy the game. That right there, I was just like, holy crap. These guys are awesome. I got to give kudos to you guys who are at GameStop. You guys are ridiculously nice. And, ooh, a weapon. So yeah, you could pick up enemy weapons like before, and they work the same as before. So yeah, but yeah, those guys who worked at the line local games, I will never forget them, even though that game is going to be relocating. Those guys were just awesome. I, I really do love those guys. Uh, thank you guys so much. Anyway, yeah, Rodan's portal. There was a there was a cutscene where Rodan references that um, busted cap in your ass cutscene. Sadly though, it's not it's not here. So yeah, oh, I, I wanted to show the cutscene. Yeah, whatever. Though. Yeah, he does reference the um, the best line of Bayonetta one. Um, bust the cap in your ass. I really wanted to show it, but sadly though, I think he only plays once. Oh, love that cutscene so much. Oh, anyway, though, let's keep moving on. What the heck are Bayonetta? What were you doing? I don't even know what Bayonetta was just like doing right there. But whatever, though, let's keep advancing. Oh, whoa! It's that guy again from the prologue. Ah, oh, crap. Uh, yeah, sorry if you hear like a little ruffling. My I had to, what's it called, maneuver my mic. But dang. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay, that guy's back. Let's just get some halos. Because we're, we're going to need all the halos we can, we can get. The Cascade Foregrounds. Wow, this place looks so beautiful. Before I forget, next portal is right down here. Okay, good. Okay, let's, let's see what happens when we enter here.